don't like Marvel movies at all. But let me explain, and that's okay. Uh, so a bunch of people have been asking about movies uh, in the comments and asked me like what, what movies I like or what are my favorite movies. And I've been hesitant to talk about it because it's often this hard thing where I honestly don't like Marvel movies. It's not being, or DC movies or whatever. Uh, when I was young, I learned how to read in a weird way that was an experimental for like one year in, in the early 70s because they found out that if you learn how to spell this way or learn how to read this way, you'll never be able to spell, but you'll be able to read super fast and at a super high level early. It's a weird mix. I cannot spell at all. <clears throat> it's a weird, weird, bad thing, but that's how I learned to read. And then uh, thanks to 70s parenting, uh, my dad would often take me on sales trips with him. Uh, he was a salesman and we'd go to Buffalo and he, he would sit me in the car for six hours by myself, like seven years old, six, seven years old. And he's just like, yeah, here, here's some money for comic books. And I would be like, I don't want comic books. So once he left, I'd root through the car for any change I could get. And then actually sold some stuff out of the car. I think adults knew like they're just being nice, but I bought uh, Pulp Fiction novels. Uh, in fact, I bought, uh, the first one I ever bought was A Stone for Danny Fisher. It's not a particularly good book. It's not a deep book. It's not better than any of the comics that were out there. But it resonated with me in a way that the comics didn't. Even back in the 70s, comics were different than they are now. They're way more sophisticated now and kind of deeper. Not to knock what was there, but like I just didn't have a connection with them. So I read that. And that was pretty much all my growing up. I never read comics. I read uh, novels. That does not make me better. It just is something that happened that was different. And so because of that, I never had anything resonate with, with the Marvel movies. Um, and it's weird to say, cause I'm, I'm going a long way to say, start negative, but actually say not to be negative. Okay. So, but I just didn't have that connection, um, at all. And so then, you know, when I started watching movies and started writing myself and creating content, um, you know, the realization that all story is, is Western, Western story is you want something, you don't get it. You want something, you don't get it. You want something, if you get it, it's a comedy. If you don't get it, it's a tragedy. Now. For a while, McKee was the hot book that everyone read. Story, oh my God, all the engineers coming back after reading Story were going to one of those sessions and thinking they could write giant novels because of that or something. I don't know, whatever. But then the thing became uh, Save the Cat. And Save the Cat is the same idea, but all of those movies are based on that. And so that means at the end of the second act or beginning of third, you're gonna have an all those lost scene where, oh my God, how could they ever, everything just went wrong. like. And it becomes very formulaic to me and very pap. And I know that's coming. And I know the whole breakdown of that. Because I literally so stringently follow that book. Um, and that that way of writing. That it just doesn't resonate with me even now. Right? And I don't have any of the history of the characters or whatever. Right? But I say that because I am not going to say the movies I do like. And if I just say the movies I do like on their own, it sounds arrogant in a way. But my movies that I like are no better than the movies you like. You just like your movies because they resonate with you in a different way than the movies that I resonate with. Like, so what did I watch last year? I think the movie that I liked the most last year was a 1974 film, uh, Alice in the Cities by uh, Vin Vendors. Uh, he's probably best known for, uh, uh, oh my God, come on, his angel movie. What is his angel movie? Oh. <sighs> Sorry, I, I'm going to cut that out. Uh, Wings of Desire. Uh which is, which is also a decent movie, but I really, really like Alice in the Cities. And boy, for a modern, for a movie set in the seventies, it actually talks about some modern concepts. But I guess a movie that doesn't follow that formula very much that way and really undersells what it's about. It does not explain anything to you. It just presents it to you and then you are on your own to figure it out. Uh, and that's again, not to say like, oh, look, cause I'm so smart or whatever, it's just, that's what I resonate with and that's the reason why or whatever, right? And so that's fine. Um, and then this past weekend we rewatched uh, Margaret, um, the long version. It's a Kenneth Lonegren film from, uh, I think I pronounced that right, from like 2011. And it's, a, about, a, so it's, a, it's about a it's about a young woman who's essentially finding her place in the world and her voice and um, really dives into the thing we talked about the other week about being NPCs, uh, how people aren't really NPCs, but they're real people. And everybody has a life and everybody has something um, that's meaningful to them. And the again, from two, for 2011, it was really, it could have been made yesterday. Uh, 
and it would work. Both those movies are on Criterion Channel. I really like Criterion Channel um, because it has movies like that. Um, and uh, especially uh, Margaret, uh, you got to watch the long version. Of it, and you need the long version. It's very, very poetic in its visuals and it, it's just a different kind of movie. Now, did I watch Oppenheimer? No, because I haven't gone to movie theaters. I'm not, I'm, I don't, if I'm going to get COVID, I'm going to get it for something good. Uh, I will. I like Dunkirk. I like Dunkirk a lot. I think Christopher Nolan's an interesting director and in how he does with sound and stuff. And if you like the, how he does weird stuff with sound, man, uh, Margaret really does it because you don't hear most of the conversations that are going on in the movie. Uh, it's, it's really well done. Uh, but like Dunkirk, I really like because to me, it's not about the story per se, but that feeling and that tension of, of being at war and that just constant anxiety, right? And they build it with the music and stuff is really beautifully done. Um, so like, those are the kind of movies I watch. That doesn't make me better. That doesn't make me smarter. I can like those things and you could like your things. We each have this history that brought us to why we like these things or don't like these things. It's not actually the value of the thing that we're watching, right? It's not like one is, is demonstrably better than the other. There is not a, a system of classification for art that has one do that. That's why I don't like best of or, you know, best game of the year or whatever awards. I really don't. I really, really, really don't. Um, because, uh, yeah, luckily I don't have to participate in those this year, but, uh, <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't like that. I don't like that thinking that one thing is better than the other because move different movies have had different impacts on me, uh, at different times. And I really, 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 really like those movies in a way that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good or bad film. Like, I don't know, like, it's filmed correctly. Ooh, ooh. like, I don't know. But, but like different movies will hit you at different times and they'll have different meaning for you. Um, I had something going on in my life and I was flying in a plane and I had a drink and I watched the movie Arrival and um, the, the, the aliens coming down, right? And Arrival is, even if you knew how it was going to end, it was going to end badly, would you still want that time with that person? And I sobbed like a baby on that plane because uh, that hit me right at the right time. And that was like the greatest movie ever, right? Uh, I don't know if I would have watched it some other time if it would have hit me that way. And it's the same with games. Like sometimes a game, just like I often say, right? I'll often say here, people ask me if I played something. I won't go into it or rip it apart. It'll just be like, yeah, it's not for me. It may not be for me at the time. It may not be for me ever. It's just not my kind of thing, right? And for games, I have this weird thing of I didn't play Nintendo games. Uh, I once got asked for the 25th anniversary of uh, Zelda. Zelda is the most influential game ever for every game designer. How did it influence me? I'm like, eh, no, no, not at all. Never played it. Any good? And the guy didn't put that in his little recap. Uh, but like that's, I have this weird blindness to that. It's just like, I had an Amiga then. We played Amiga games. I didn't play. That was a, our Nintendo was our Tecmo Bowl machine. That's all we played on it. Does that mean any of those games are bad? No, of course not, right? And I think it's really helpful uh, especially as we talk about games on my channel and back and forth, that we try not to label things as bad or good. And I probably, we all break this, right? Like it's, I, it's an attempt to try, but it's really more about like, did it work for you? What did you like about it? How did you react to that? What is the thing that worked for you? Um, and then I'll try to do the same. Again, we're going to fail at this a bunch. It's hard, but the movie thing's almost easier to talk about because it's more abstract to me, right? I don't make movies yet. No, I don't know. Uh, but right, but as we talk about things, it's a good way to think about it, right? Is nothing is good or bad. It is either for you or not for you. And sometimes it's time-based. So that is my meandering thing. And I just decided to start it with a clickbaity thing about Marvel movies. Marvel movies are fine, I, right? If, if, if you enjoy them, if you, I think especially if you enjoy them and you know all the lore and the history and then how they clash together and then the big, the big payoffs that happen. I, you know, I have friends who are really, really into comics who are explaining the movies to me so excitedly that I felt really bad. So we'll try that. Uh, and then people will say, I'm doing this because I suck. And nah, that's probably true too.